Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. On the Way to Krishna Chapter 1 Through Way to Happiness Every one of us is searching after happiness but we do not know what real happiness is We see so much advertised about happiness but practically speaking we see so few happy people This is because so few people know that the platform of real happiness is beyond temporary things it is this real happiness that is described in the bhagavad gita by lord krishna to arjuna happiness is generally perceived through our senses a stone for instance has no senses and cannot perceive happiness and distress developed consciousness can perceive happiness and distress more intensely than undeveloped consciousness trees have consciousness but it is not developed trees may stand for a long time in all kinds of weather but they have no way of perceiving miseries if a human being were asked to stand like a tree for only 3 days or even less he would not be able to tolerate it the conclusion is that every living being feels happiness or distress according to the degree of development of his consciousness the happiness that we are experiencing in the material world is not real happiness if one asks a tree are you feeling happy the tree if it could might say yes i am happy standing here all year i am enjoying the wind and snowfall very much etc this may be enjoyed by the tree but for the human being it is a very low standard of enjoyment there are different kinds and grades of living entities and their conceptions and perceptions of happiness are also of all different types and grades Although one animal may see that another animal is being slaughtered he will go right on chewing grass for he has no knowledge to understand that he may be next he is thinking that he is happy but the next moment he may be slaughtered in this way there are different degrees of happiness yet of all of them what is the highest happiness Shri Krishna tells Arjuna Sukham atyantikam yat buddhi ghrayam atindriyam veti yatra na chaivayam sthitas chalati tatvatah In that joyous state samadhi one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness realized through transcendental senses established thus one never departs from the truth gita 6.21 buddhi means intelligence one has to be intelligent if he wants to enjoy animals do not have really developed intelligence and so cannot enjoy life as a human being can the hands the nose the eyes the other sense organs and all the bodily parts may be present on a dead man but he cannot enjoy why not the enjoying energy the spiritual spark has left and therefore the body has no power if one looks further into the matter with a little intelligence he can understand that it was not the body that was enjoying at all but the small spiritual spark that was within 
all the one may think that he is enjoying by the bodily sense organs the real enjoyer is that spiritual spark the spark always has the potency of enjoyment but it is not always manifest due to being covered by the material tabernacle although we may not be aware of it it is not possible for the body to experience enjoyment without the presence of this spiritual spark if a man is offered the dead body of a beautiful woman will he accept it no because the spiritual spark has moved out of the body not only was it enjoying within the body but it was maintaining the body when that spark leaves the body simply deteriorates it follows that if the spirit is enjoying it must have its senses also otherwise how can it enjoy the vedas confirm that the spirit soul although atomic in size is the actual enjoying agent it is not possible to measure the soul but that is not to say that it is without measurement an object may seem to us to be no bigger than a point and may seem to have no length or width but when we perceive it under a microscope we can see that it has both length and width similarly the soul also has its dimensions but we cannot perceive them when we buy a suit or dress it is made to fit the body the spiritual spark must have form otherwise how is it the material body has grown to accommodate it the conclusion is that the spiritual spark is not impersonal it is an actual person god is an actual person and the spiritual spark being a fragmental part of him is also a person if the father has personality and individuality the son also has them and if the son has them we can conclude that the father has them so how can we as sons of god assert our personality and individuality and at the same time deny them to our father the supreme lord atindriyam means that we have to transcend these material senses before we can appreciate real happiness pramante yogino anante satyananda chidatmani the yogis who are aspiring after spiritual life are also tasting enjoyment by focusing on the super soul within if there is no pleasure if there is no enjoyment then what is the point of going to so much trouble to control the senses what kind of pleasure are the yogis relishing if they are taking so much trouble that pleasure is ananta endless how is this the spirit soul is eternal and the supreme lord is eternal therefore reciprocation of their loving exchanges is eternal one who is actually intelligent will refrain from the flickering sensual enjoyment of this material body and fix his enjoyment in spiritual life his participation in spiritual life with the supreme lord is called rasa leela we have often heard of krishna's rasa leela with the cowherd girls in vrindavana that is not like ordinary exchanges that take place between these material bodies rather it is an exchange of feelings through spiritual bodies one has to be somewhat intelligent to understand this for a foolish man who cannot understand what real happiness is seeks happiness in this material world in india there is the story of a man who did not know what sugar cane was and was told that it was very sweet to chew oh what does it look like he asked it looks just like a bamboo rod someone said so the foolish man began to chew all kinds of bamboo rods how can he begin to experience the sweetness of sugar cane 
similarly we are trying to get happiness and pleasure but we are trying for them by chewing this material body therefore there is no happiness and no pleasure for the time being there may be some little feeling of pleasure but that is not actual pleasure for it is temporary it is like a show of lightning which we may see flashing in the sky that may momentarily seem like lightning but the real lightning is beyond that because a person does not really know what happiness is he deviates from real happiness the process for establishing oneself in real happiness is this process of krishna consciousness by krishna consciousness we can gradually develop our real intelligence and naturally enjoy relishing spiritual happiness as we make spiritual progress as we begin to relish spiritual happiness we proportionately abandon material happiness as we make progress in understanding the absolute truth we naturally become detached from this false happiness if somehow or the other one is promoted to that stage of krishna consciousness what is the result yam labdhva cha param labham manyate nadikam tatah yasmin sthitho na dukhena guru na pi vichalyate upon gaining this he thinks that there is no greater gain being situated in such a position one is never shaken even in the midst of greatest difficulty gita 6.22 when one attains that stage other achievements appear insignificant in this material world we are trying to achieve so many things riches women fame beauty knowledge etc but as soon as we are situated in krishna consciousness we think oh no achievement is better than this krishna consciousness is so potent that a little taste can save one from the greatest danger as one begins to relish the taste of krishna consciousness he begins to see other so called enjoyments and attainments as flat and tasteless and if one is situated firmly in krishna consciousness the greatest danger cannot disturb him there are so many dangers in life because the material world is a place of danger we tend to close our eyes to this and because we are foolish we try to adjust to these dangers we may have many dangerous moments in our lives but if we are training ourselves in krishna consciousness and preparing ourselves to go back home back to godhead we will not care for them our attitude will then be dangers come and go so let them happen it is very difficult to make this kind of adjustment as long as one is on the materialistic platform and is identifying with the gross body which is composed of perishable elements but the more one advances in krishna consciousness the more he becomes free from bodily designations and this material entanglement in shrimad bhagavatam the material world is compared to a great ocean within this material universe there are millions and billions of planets floating in space and we can just imagine how many atlantic and pacific oceans are there in fact the whole material universe is likened to a great ocean of misery an ocean of birth and death in order to cross this great ocean of nescience a strong boat is needed and that strong boat is the lotus feet of krishna we should immediately get aboard that boat we should not hesitate thinking that krishna's feet are very small 
the whole universe is simply resting on his leg for one who takes shelter of his feet it is said that the material universe is no more significant than a puddle of water found in the impression of a calf's hoof print there is certainly no difficulty in crossing over such a small puddle tam vidya dukkha samyoga viyogam yoga samgitam this indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact gita 6.23 we are entangled in this material world due to uncontrolled senses the yoga process is meant to control these senses if somehow we can manage to control the senses we can turn our face to actual spiritual happiness and make our lives successful sanischayena yoktavyo yogo anirvinna chetasa sankalpa prabhavan kamams tyaktva sarvan sheshatah manasaivendriya gramam viniyam ya samantatah shanaikshanair uparamet buddhya driti grihitya आत्मसंस्थम मन किंचिंत यश्चलती मनश्चल स्थिर तथस्तथो निम्त आत्मन वशं नए वन शुड एंगेज वन सेल्फ इन द प्राक्टिस ऑफ योगा विथ अंडीविएटिंग डिटर्मिनेशन एंड फेट and not be deviated from the path one should abandon without exception all material desires born of mental speculation and thus control all the senses on all sides by the mind gradually step by step with full conviction one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence sustained by full conviction and thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else from wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self gita 6.24 to 26 the mind is always disturbed it is going sometimes this way and sometimes that way by yoga practice we literally drag the mind to krishna consciousness the mind strays from krishna consciousness to so many exterior objects because from time immemorial life after life that has been our practice due to this there may be great difficulty in the beginning when one tries to fix his mind in krishna consciousness but these difficulties can all be overcome it is because the mind is agitated and not fixed on krishna that it goes from one thought to another for instance when we are engaged in work memories of events that happened 10 20 30 or 40 years ago may suddenly come to our mind for no apparent reason these thoughts come from our subconscious and because they are always rising the mind is always agitated if we agitate a lake or a pond all the mud from the bottom comes to the surface similarly when the mind is agitated so many thoughts arise from the subconscious that have been stored there over the years if we do not disturb a pond the mud will settle to the bottom this yoga process is the means to quiet the mind and allow all these thoughts to settle for this reason there are so many rules and regulations to follow in order to keep the mind from being agitated if we follow the rules and regulations gradually the mind will come under control 
there are so many don'ts and so many do's and if one is serious about training the mind he has to follow them if he acts whimsically what is the possibility of the mind being controlled when the mind is finally trained to the point where it will think of nothing but krishna it will attain peace and will become very tranquil prashant manasam hinam yoginam sukham uttamam upaiti shanta rajasam brahma bhutam akalmasham the yogi whose mind is fixed on me verily attains the highest perfection of transcendental happiness he is beyond the mode of passion he realizes his qualitative identity with the supreme and thus he is freed from all reactions to past deeds gita 6.27 the mind is always concocting objects for happiness i am always thinking this will make me happy or that will make me happy happiness is here happiness is there in this way the mind is taking us anywhere and everywhere it is as though we are riding on a chariot behind an unbridled horse we have no power over where we are going but can only sit in horror and watch helplessly as soon as the mind is engaged in the process of krishna consciousness specifically by chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare then the wild horses of the mind will gradually come under our control we must engage in krishna's service every moment of our lives in order to keep the restless and turbulent mind from dragging us from one object to another in a vain search for happiness in the temporary material world yunjan evam sadatmanam yogi digata kalmashah sukhena brahma samsparsham atyantam sukham ashnute das the self controlled yogi constantly engaged in yoga practice becomes free from all material contamination and achieves the highest stage of perfect happiness in transcendental loving service to the lord geeta 6.28 krishna serves as a patron for one who is devoted to him when one is in difficulty his patron saves him as stated in the bhagavad geeta Krishna is the real friend of every living entity and we have to revive our friendship with him the method for reviving this friendship is the process of krishna consciousness by practice of krishna consciousness mundane passionate hankering will come to a stop this passionate hankering keeps us divorced from krishna Krishna is within us and is waiting for us to turn to him but we are too busy passionately eating the fruits of the tree of material desire this passionate compulsion to enjoy these fruits must stop and we must situate ourselves in our real identity as brahman pure spirit Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Yeah.